little channel cat. Got him. Bullhead. Oh, yeah, big old bullhead. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to catch catfish. This is going to be a basic outline for beginners. I'm going to go over some of the rigging, a couple of the baits we're going to use. Today we're out here at my buddy Brian's house. We're also fishing with JP. You haven't seen Brian before, but you've seen JP around with his redneck uh, little outfits and fake teeth on multiple episodes. I know it's good entertainment for you guys. But we're gonna get set up here. We're gonna get some lines out, get some fish on film, and I'll be breaking down all the instructional along the way for you guys. So stay with us, we're gonna have some fun. So in catfishing, a lot of the gear we're gonna get started off with is spinning rods. A lot of guys use bait casting gear with runners when they reach that higher level of catfishing. But when you're first getting started, use a spinning rod. It's a lot easier for most guys to get started. You get a little bit better range. Uh, it's just gonna work out a little bit easier for them when you're first getting started. Now, depending on the catfish you're fishing for, I would say catfish that range from 10 pounds and under, use 15 to 20 pound line catfish that are gonna range from that 10 to 20. Uh, make sure you use at least 20 pound line and catfish over that you want to use 20 to 50 pound that's when you're going to start venturing into your braided lines at that point for those big uh, beast like catfish because braid has a smaller diameter uh, versus its strength it's going to be much stronger with a smaller diameter what i'm using here on this rod is 20 pound p line cxx clear uh, this is real strong and i'm using 20 pound for my minimum even if I'm catching five pound catfish out here on this particular rig, and I'm gonna tell you why. This is a Carolina rig. See this egg weight I have right here? It slides back and forth. I have a bead on each side of it, which is gonna protect the mud from getting into my barrel weight right there. And it's also gonna help protect that knot going to that barrel swivel that I have right here. Catfish are not line shy, so I'm gonna use a short leader, and I'm using a circle hook. I like to catch and release a lot of my catfish and a lot of the time if you don't have the rod in your hands and you're like, oh, it's biting, I got there and I missed, a lot of the time the circle hook's gonna catch that fish for you way more often than a standard J hook would. Um, the normal hook sizes that we're gonna use for catfishing range from you know, size two aught all the way up to eight aught, really depends on the type of catfish you're fishing for. Out here, we probably have bullheads and channel cat for the most part. So I'm starting off with a four aught circle hook. Um, if I was targeting fish 20 plus, I would go to six, seven, eight aught circle hooks at that point. The knot I'm using to my hook for a circle hook because it's gonna turn around in their mouth and you need it to be able to pendulum very easy is a double surgeon's loop knot. And I'll put that illustration over the video right now. So go ahead and pause that and watch it if you need to and practice and come back to the video. All of my rest of my knots that I have going to my leader right here are Palomar knots. And my tag ends on all my terminal tackle, I'm leaving a good quarter inch of tag line. You don't want this to pull through because you trim that tag line too short and lose your fish. Leave longer ones up here. Like I said, catfish are not line shy or terminal shy at all. So short leaders, longer tag ends on your knots, Palomars to a barrel swivel, and you wanna use just enough weight to stay down. This little egg weight right here, we're fishing a pond. There's really no current. So this little one ounce egg weight is gonna do just fine out here. If you're using a river, you're gonna to wanna to use a pyramid weight and a slider instead of this. A slider is just like a little tube with a snap swivel on the side. You run your line through that little tube and it'll slide back and forth and a snap. And the reason why you have sliders is because a lot of the time in rivers or tidal water, the speed of that current's gonna fluctuate. So you're gonna to have to use heavier weight or lighter weight depending on how fast that current's going. But you always want just enough weight to get down. This right here is a basic Carolina rig. That's all that is to a four out circle hook. And I'm gonna rig this up with the brain rig and I'll show you guys how to do that. So the brain rig consists of chicken liver and sticky thread. This is just a nylon based stretchy thread right here to help fasten it onto your hook a little bit better. Most tackle shops carry this. Uh, if not, you just type on sticky thread on Google and order you some. Make sure you order four or five. You'll get addicted to this stuff and you'll want to use it. So don't waste your time ordering one paying for shipping. All right, so now I got a good chunk of chicken liver. If I just stick this on the hook, it's going to fall right off. One little pull, they're going to tug it right off. So what I suggest doing is getting some of this nylon sticky thread 
and it's really good for hanging onto your bait. All I did was stick the tip in between my index finger and my middle finger, and with my uh, index and my thumb, I'm gripping the eye of the hook, and I'm gonna hold this in my opposite hand, and just loosely start coming around the liver like so. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start forming to look like a brain. And you wanna go around with a loose amount of pressure. You don't want it to be very tight at all. If you're going around there too tight, it's gonna start cutting through the chicken liver, it's gonna be no good. They'll be able to still pick it off your hook and you wanna make sure your hook tip's exposed at all times like so. Come around. Now instead of just pulling on your thread real hard to break it off, you wanna reach down, pinch it with these fingers, then break it off so you don't tear through your chicken liver like so. Dangle that somewhere you're not gonna get it all over yourself or all over something you care about because it's gonna stink real bad. And then take a wet washcloth and clean off your hands and you're ready to go. When you guys are out here working with chicken liver and dough baits and stink baits and night crawlers and handling catfish, your hands are going to smell like death. You don't want to go home like that to your wife and say, hey, here you go, and scratch your back and smell like the garbage can just walk in the house. So, you know, I'm involved with a company called The Fisherman's Soap. You guys got to check this stuff out. It'll remove any stench off your hand. It'll also mask that human smell and that oils on your hand beforehand if you want to break down those scents to not let that fish detect you uh, moving in there and smelling something foreign. So it's got a lot of options, removing stench off your hands, cat pee, garlic, nasty fish, you name it, the fisherman's soap, check it out. Now we're getting hit on the circle hook, so I'm gonna reel out my slack line, and as he starts to hit it, I'm just gonna kinda step back and ease into it and slowly start reeling into it to where I feel the fish. I'm just taking slow pumps at it. Hooked up. Nice little channel cat. You get that net for me, baby. Get by. Got it. There we go. First little channel cat of the day. Let me show you something with these channel cats. They have a barbel here, here, and on their top dorsal fin. You just grab and that stabs you in the hand, you're gonna have a bad day. I've got all sorts of little scars from helping kids out over the years and having catfish stab me. So if you bring up your thumb and your fingers and you trap these barbels on each side, and what I do with my hand is I push this one down like that and I hold them just like this and you can handle these catfish pretty easily instead of letting them bounce all over the ground and everything trying to get the hook loose. So we'll go ahead and get the hook out of this guy and uh, we'll let him go, but let me show you a close up of this fish. Crawler, huh? Is that this one right here? Now we're getting hit on the crawler. Missed. Pop that bell off of there. Catfish are persistent. A lot of time you go to set the hook. This isn't a circle hook on this. This is just like an oversized uh, mosquito hook that's more for the salt water that Trocar makes. Real hardy, small, sharp hook. This is only a two-aught hook. But um, what I do is I have it tied straight onto the line. It's the same thing as a drop shot rig, in case you haven't heard of that, but I'll show you that after uh, I check the bait right here, because if he's not staying with it, more than likely the bait's gone, because catfish are persistent. Okay, so now here is basically like a drop shot. A lot of the time we'll do a high low leader, which is two hooks tied on by Palomar knots. But just to make it simple, we're doing one right here. And I have a little saltwater two watt. It's kind of like a mosquito hook. It's just a little tiny bait hook made by Trocar right here. Going down to a little two ounce round weight. This is just enough to keep it to the bottom. I could probably use a one, but I had the two. Um, get away with as light as you can to stay down to the bottom unless your bait's moving then go a little heavier And all I'm doing is loading up one whole night crawler on this bad boy And that's another rig we're utilizing. This is good a lot of the time when you have a lot of snags on the bottom The Palomar is about the strongest knot out there So I have that going right here down to this weight to a little clinch knot So I know my clinch knots a lot weaker than this Palomar is to where if this gets caught in the rocks This will break off and I still won't lose the fish Got him. 
<laughs> Channel cat again. There we go. Nice. Wow. That one, Brian? <laughs> Let me show you guys. See that placement of that circle hook? That's exactly how it's supposed to go. It turns out that hook point points back at the shank of the hook, the uh, backbone of the hook right there. So it rotates around and gets them in the corner of the mouth. So all you have to do is take this eye and push backwards and it pops right out of that channel cat's mouth. He's perfectly healthy. Let's let him go. So a real simple beginner outline for tracking down catfish is to look for main lake points. You know, points that stick right out into your lake. Um, look for rock piles, big rocky banks, steep banks, banks where you know they go from shallow and drop off real quick where there's a ledge. Catfish like to hold to those ledges. Um, up next to those shallow areas where bluegills can swim off and they'll ambush those or uh, you know around timber where crawfish may be in there and they'll be able to eat from there. <laughs> um, the mouth of creek channels are always very popular where it goes from shallow to deep real fast so try those areas when you're first getting started. Man. Real smooth bro. <laughs> there we go. I'm on around with that net JP. Gotcha. Oh, it's the turtle! <laughs> you know, one of the most common mistakes I often see when guys are out catfishing is they'll cast to one spot, wait for 10 minutes, pick it up in that same area and lob it 50 foot further out and moving their bait all over. Well, catfish have taste buds all over their body and they're going off smell here. They're not seeing your bait. So holding your bait in that one particular area, even if they pick off your bait, to get that bait back to that exact same spot is imperative because the scent trail has been developed to that area. They're coming in off of that scent trail, not the visual, not the splash like a predator species would, so to speak. So remember, even if you cast two or three rods out there, only replace one or two baits at a time and you'll have a much more better visual perspective on where you should put that bait right back out there. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to help those fish that were following that scent trail get back there and find your bait a lot faster. Um, at the same time, if you're fishing at a spot for 30 to 45 minutes, it usually only takes a catfish that's actively feeding in the area 15 to 20 minutes to come find your bait. So remember, if you cast out there and let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes and pull it up, you may not have gave them adequate time to find it. Um, if you go over five, uh, you know, over 45 minutes, I would say pick up at that point. Uh, look for another break, look for another ledge or a point or a little fast drop off next to the bank and try that area for about another 45 minutes and keep moving on. If you follow those simple rules like that, you're going to end up running into a lot of catfish and you'll have way better success. So trust me on that. Yeah. <laughs> look at the smile. Look at this. Do you know him? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fat bullhead. Dang. Yeah. That sucker's fat. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that smile. Dang. You think you like McDonald's kids? A smile like that? This guy likes it. Look at that head and that body. Nice one for JP. Yeah. You can see the big difference that channel cats are really elongated and they're more, you know, the body is evenly profiled versus a bull head. Big old fat melon tapering little fast body. But that that nice one right there man we'll see if we can get some more on film for you guys here Mwah. see ya baby filthy <laughs> tastes like sushi let's do the net release <laughs> we'll put them in this ego net we'll revive the fish and we'll let them swim out there they go right. hang with us guys and when we come back it'll be back to more fatty catfish Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and when it comes to spooling up my reels, I choose nothing less than the best, and that's why I use P-Line each and every time. Are you fishing the best? Hey, Ryan, baby. <laughs> Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today.
Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Have you had the chance to fish the baddest hoochie on the market today? That's right, I'm talking about the Shasta Tackle Wiggle Hoochie, one of the most dynamic reaction trout and salmon lures that runs second to no other for pulling and triggering fish into striking. So I guess the real question is, are you catching all the fish you should be catching? Thanks for watching, guys. Now let's stick this giant. Oh, that's a fat oh, one. Step yeah. out, step out. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Beast. Beast. Yeah. Easy on him. Easy on him. Yeah. Dude, that's a fat, fat one, dude. I think that's going to be the backyard record. Come on, bro. He's on him. Keep him away from the wall. Keep him away from the wall. Oh, he's tripping good. Oh, he's tripping good. That's tight drag, too. Come on. Oh, that's fat. Oh, Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Yata! Oh, yeah. oh, that is right. Oh, oh, that other line's all twisted around me. <laughs> Dude, that's a dog. Boy. It just went 10 3 and back to 9 11. I, I would, yeah, that's off. This fish is all of 10 pounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're pounds. calling them 10, Brian. Look at this big old belly on that hog right there. We're gonna let these fish go. This is just good, clean fun, hanging out in Brian's backyard, cracking fatties like that, dude. Up top, right there. Very nice. Nice, let's get that fish released. Now, I'm just gonna put this fish down in here until the fish starts kicking. Watch the gills real good. Fish is trying to turn over. There we go. Nice, smooth release. Live another day. There we go, I got him. Little guy. Here's another nice little channel cat. Let's go ahead and let this guy go. A lot of these clean ones in here and these little guys fight great too. Real blast catching. Look how clean with the little black dots on this. Awesome fish out here, Brian. Yeah, they're beautiful. And that's how to catch catfish with Nick the Informative Fisherman. I want to thank you, Brian, for using your place, bro. Absolutely. Had a good time. You got to stuck the you got to stick the fatty. I got to get a bunch of small ones. Hey, I still had some action. Had a good time. Got to help Brian pull a hog over the fence. Um, we're gonna do a lot more fishing out here. Maybe do some carp fishing, some other things to show you guys. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned, guys. If you need to get a hold of me, feel free to hit me up on the helpline or write me an email at informativefisherman at gmail, and I'll get back to you and answer any of your fishing questions. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.